Welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Professor Kevin Kassar. Professor, welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prof. Kassar is a consultant vascular surgeon at Mater Dei Hospital, Malta. He graduated as a doctor of medicine and surgery at the University of Malta in 1993 and he underwent s- surgical training in Malta and higher training in the northeast of Scotland at Aberdeen in Venice. He carried out research with Prof. Julie Brittenden at the University of Aberdeen into platelet function and peripheral arterial disease, funded by the Vascular Surgical Society. He was appointed senior lecturer at the University of Aberdeen and consultant vascular surgeon at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary in 2004, and in 2007, three years later, he was appointed consultant vascular surgeon in Malta. He is an associate professor of surgery at the University of Malta, and his main interest is revascularization in diabetics and hemodialysis access. He forms part of the local diabetic foot research group, which is currently conducting research into the clinical use of thermography in the diabetic foot. And in fact, the diabetic foot will be the main subject we will be discussing today. Um, Professors, vascular surgeon, your life's work centers on the management of vascular disease, and Malta is known for the prevalence of diabetes. How can you uh, relate the current situation and how it has developed over the past two, three decades? Thank you. First of all, the big difference over the last two decades, as you, as you mentioned, is the big difference in population. So the first thing that has happened is that if you look at the census of 1995 and the census of 2011, which is the most recent, the population has increased by 40,000. Um, so if we take the average prevalence of diabetes as 10%, then that means that we have an additional 4,000 diabetics over the last two decades. The big difference is in terms of the provision of services at Mater Day in particular is that we now boast a full vascular service. We have three vascular consultants who perform only vascular surgery. And this means that we have a 24 hour, seven day a week vascular service. Um, that means that any day any patient is admitted, he or she will get the same quality of care. Uh, The other major development is that we have now got a vascular laboratory service. We have four um, vascular sonographers who have been trained in this area and these four sonographers provide the vascular ultrasound service. In addition, over the last few years we have developed a system where we can perform endovascular and open surgery in the same patient at the same time. We have facilities in theatre to do endovascular procedures and indeed, a lot of the procedures that we do for revascularization involve both use of endovascular techniques and open surgery at the same time. We have to support us um, very skilled intervention radiologists. And the procedures that they are doing are procedures that in the past were not done locally, including, for example, calf artery angioplasties, which are the bread and butter of revascularization in diabetics. We have also a diabetic foot clinic which was developed in the last few years. This is a multidisciplinary clinic which involves podiatrists, the vascular surgeon and the diabetologist. And the patients therefore get a complete service as a one-stop clinic. We have increasing numbers of diabetic podiatrists and podiatrists in the community. And therefore the service provided to diabetics is significantly improved over the last few years. In addition, we have a graft surveillance program which means that diabetics particularly and other patients who undergo bypass surgery continue to be followed up with um, a program where they have ultrasound scans of their graft and if these grafts are starting to fail then we refer them for angioplasty. The sum result of all of these developments means that the number of major amputations in this country has decreased by 50% between 2003 and 2014. And this is despite, as I said earlier, this significant increase in the population and the significant increase in diabetics. This is coupled with a significant increase in major bypass surgery, which is more than eightfold. Between 2006 and 2014, the number of bypasses that we do has increased by more than eight times. Hopefully this trend will continue and the number of major amputations performed in diabetics will continue to decrease. And in fact, undoubtedly you're mentioning many medical professions, many different uh, careers, all uniting into one aim, that of preventing um, um, 
vascular disease or treating, managing vascular disease. Now our audience today in includes, uh, is a varied audience, it has many different medical professionals, even people who are not actually doctors but work in the medical field. Then what can be done holistically to improve the management and the diagnosis, the early diagnosis of vascular disease? Um, as you say, diabetes of course is a systemic problem, it affects various systems and a large number of different professionals, both medical and uh, allied health professionals, are involved in the care of these diabetics. If we break down diabetes into its major uh, complications and major problems, the first and foremost, of course, is atherosclerosis, which is manifested as coronary artery disease, and therefore the cardiologists, of course, are uh, the group of professionals which have a big input to make in this group of patients. Um, with atherosclerosis, of course, cerebrovascular disease is the other area, and therefore the neurologists are involved in their care. And peripherally, of course, we have the vascular surgeons involved in the treatment of peripheral artery disease and diabetics. Professor, your first answer uh, indicates how important it is to have a multidisciplinary approach in the management of diabetes and vascular disease in general. Um, that being said, the audience here today is multidisciplinary in nature. Um, what can we done? What can be done to improve this holistic approach to vascular disease, and will it have consequence on the eventual management of the diabetic patient? Certainly, diabetes, of course, is a systemic problem. It's a systemic illness, and there are multiple organs affected. And if we go through the most important um, complications of diabetes, starting with atherosclerosis. We've got the cardiologists who take care of the coronary bed, we've got the neurologists who take care of the cerebrovascular bed, and we've got vascular surgeons taking care of peripheral arterial disease. Um, diabetic, diabetic nephropathy is another major problem, and of course the nephrologists have an important role to play in this field. The ophthalmologists with regards to diabetic retinopathy and other uh, complications in the eye relating to diabetes. With regards to the peripheral neuropathy, this usually manifests as ulcers. And in this field, we have podiatrists who have a major contribution. We have prosthetists who, by providing appropriate footwear, have a major role in prevention. And of course, tissue viability nurses who take care of these patients who develop ulcers. The diabetologists, of course, have a central role in coordinating all of this in terms of controlling these patients' blood glucose. Um, when it comes to interventions, we have intervention radiologists. We rely, of course, on our anesthetic colleagues when it comes to general anesthetics. And, of course, we have the interventionists and the intensivists who take care of these patients during the perioperative period while they are, they are in intensive care. Central to this, of course, is the general practitioner, who usually is the person who has the central role with regards to coordinating the treatment of these patients. And in addition, we have other allied healthcare professionals. All of these people are involved in ensuring or in preventing the complications of diabetes in these patients. And in order to get the best out of the care of these patients, communication is central. We need communication between primary care and tertiary care and vice versa. And this, of course, may take the form of referral tickets direct telephone communication and of course letters from the tertiary level to the primary care to ensure that we coordinate the efforts between all of these people involved in the care of diabetics. Without communication between all of these people taking care of patients, um, it is very difficult to ensure that the patient gets the best treatment. Professor, one of the eventual and uh, final complications of the diabetic uh, patient is uh, a limb amputation. How often do you encounter this and how often is it preventable? Um, thankfully, as I said earlier, the number of major amputations have decreased and that has obviously uh, is of huge benefit to those in whom the limbs are saved. Um, however, there is little doubt that it is frequent that a lot of patients who develop usually minor ulcers which gradually deteriorate and eventually lead to limb loss. There is also no doubt that the vast majority of these can be prevented. And when you look at the commonest causes of why these patients end up losing their limbs, usually the cause is starts off as minor trauma. Many of the, the underlying predisposing factors or precipitating factors are simple things, 
but the commonest are things like use of inappropriate footwear, for example, diabetic patients using footwear with high heels or pointed footwear, tight footwear, uh, walking barefooted, um, so walking sometimes on hot sand in, in the summer months especially, walking on hot tarmac, um, foreign bodies going into the foot, non-compliance with footwear that they've been provided with, and also very often delay in the patient seeking attention. Furthermore, there might be delays, of course, between the patient presenting to his own healthcare professional, his GP or to the podiatrist, and being referred to the specialist. Unfortunately, delay in diabetes has a major impact on the outcomes. So the longer the delay between a patient with an ulcer, especially an infected ulcer, particularly in the context of ischemia, is referred to a specialist and reaches the specialist, then the worse the potential outcome. There is no doubt as well that occasionally the patient is referred by the general practitioner and sometimes there are delays in the patient being seen either at a and &E or being seen at a and &E and being discharged home and further delay in the patient being seen by a specialist. The key message is that in diabetics, particularly with ulcers, particularly where there is no pulse and where there is clear evidence of ischemia, these cases need to be treated very urgently. And the most effective way in ensuring that the patient is seen by the appropriate specialist is if the general practitioner or the healthcare professional who is seeing the patient takes up the phone, picks up the phone and calls the specialist who is on call or the vascular surgeon to ensure that the patient is seen to immediately and in a short space of time. That is the most effective way of getting the patient seen. Uh, so that being said, that is your take-home message, so the, the coordination between medical professionals. Um, now moving on to your role in the Diabetic Foot Research Group, and this will be my final and concluding question. Uh, what can you comment about the use of thermography in the diagnosis or the screening of um, vascular disease, particularly in the diabetic foot? Yes, um, we are currently um, carrying out research together with the engineering department and also the Faculty of Health Sciences with the podiatrists into the use of thermography in the identification of vascular disease in diabetics and in the treatment. The research is at a, a relatively early stage, um, but we are hopeful that thermography will have clinical use and relevant use in identifying patients with diabetes. Um, also in identifying the complications of diabetes, particularly in the feet, and in initiating treatment for these patients and the appropriate treatment in terms of prevention. I think the most important thing, however, in, from a practical perspective, is with regards especially to general practitioners seeing these patients, the most important thing is that any diabetic must have his pulses checked. Um, we often find that patients are referred to us without their, their pulses having been examined, and that of course leads to delay. If we do examine pulses and find that pulses are absent, that is certainly a red flag, which indicates that these patients ought to be treated as quickly as possible. Um, prevention is the most important thing, so ideally of course that we have less diabetics and encouraging people to adopt a healthy lifestyle, uh, maintaining a normal weight is crucial. Second is reducing the complication of diabetes. So, of course, we need to ensure that people who are diabetic and who are smoking stop smoking and we need to support them and help them stop smoking. Thirdly is we need to reduce the complications from atherosclerosis, so risk factor control with antiplatelet, statin, blood pressure control is important. And finally, we need to reduce the number of foot complications. So regular podiatric assessment is crucial. We need to advise these patients with regard to foot care, educate them about taking care of their feet, and refer them uh, to the podiatrist if they're not already attending. And finally, we need to ensure that when we see patients with ulcers, they are assessed fully, the pulses are checked, and there's an early and appropriate referral to the correct specialist, very often in this case is the vascular surgeon, and ensuring that the communication between primary health and tertiary care is maintained both one way and the other, and that this is continued throughout the life of the diabetic. Thank you, Professor, for your time. We hope that your input has shed more light on this uh, important 
local issue and the diabetic foot and the diabetic patient. We hope that this episode has helped to further enrich your knowledge about the subject and we um, uh, advise you, recommend that you share this video with all of your professional colleagues. Thank you for watching.